All right, it's been uh, it's it's been another minute. It's time to kind of catch up on the build here, because a couple of weeks have transpired since I was last out uh, filming, uh, and I have done some work off camera. So the engine has been rehung. The drive shaft has been put together. Uh, hmm. I thought. Let me think about this. So a few things. I had put the rear axle back on up through the transfer case there. And then I put the motor in, hung the motor, and I was able to take the transfer case and just rotate it right back in. So that made it easy because I left this as a roller. But while that technique, hanging the motor, and then just uh, really just bringing this gear, worm gear back in, bolting everything, uh, worked out for that, not able to do that work rotating this and keep the drive shaft in here uh, connected. So I ended up rehanging the back, taking the rear axle off, uh, and just kind of jimmying this back and forth until I could get that drive shaft connected. I do have another video kind of showing my technique with a screwdriver, um, but just a bit of a pain, so I had to redo that work. We do have a new boot on here, the proper boot, so that's great. The other thing I, I don't often uh, stress enough is just what goes on off camera is just all of the uh, the bolts that get cleaned up where, just as an example here, all of these getting uh, re-threaded because people had used mismatched bolts. So getting this all back to an M6 one pitch. So you find yourself threading out, cleaning, and then I'm fortunate to have um, lots of <laughs> lots of metric bolts so getting four M6 one pitch the right length finding those and cleaning up all of the threads oftentimes as well I might tumble these bolts in my tumbler or I'll stick them through cardboard and then paint tops but all that work takes time so off camera, I've been through, um, cleaned up threads on OEM bolts. Um, everything through here has anti-seize, torque to spec. I have rerun the harness. Originally, if you had been paying attention on here and you knew Big Bears, this harness had been run down the left-hand side. OEM runs down the left-hand side. If you're also watching, you're noticing as I notice here that I have an engine hanging bolt without a nut on it, so I gotta get that. This still needs to be um, rerouted appropriately. I'm not going to leave that hanging there. But we are getting close. We have a new filter in. We have to do an oil change. I have a nice spare transfer case from the parts quad. That'll be great in case anything goes or you joint or anything of that nature. One thing I do like is taking the time to do the paint. The satin finish paint really brought back some of the OEM look. Getting rid of cleaning up a lot of that uh, rust. While I had the motor out, had everything torn down, I did what I could. Um, so there's still spots because I didn't do the swing arm and I don't like overspray. So if I couldn't do it safely and effectively by holding a piece of cardboard and going around, I didn't. This is all high temp on the exhaust redone. Um, also on the shields and you see we have a shield so we can redirect the heat, not burn new plastics. So all told there, between last filming, a couple of weeks, traveling for work, um, had a birthday, yay, go me. Uh, just been kind of out here working a little bit here and there because it's a lot of the tedious, slow things, putting it back together. None of it's rocket science, it's just time. So that catches us up to now. So we've got a little bit of electrical rerouting to do, fastening. We've got to do uh, oil, um, check some diff fluids. But we are really close to seeing if this will fire and then coming around to last, uh, you know, last touches and tune ups. So uh, let's get to a little bit more here. <laughs> Uh, pretty nasty there a little bit of a surprise came out clean but uh, that was a that was a mess so we'll get that cleaned up we'll keep going here <laughs>
Now CDIs have been a little finicky. This is in theory a good CDI, but I lost spark from another manufacturer. This is a 1PZ. I've never tried them before. This is what we're gonna to try today. So I took a beat and ended up having to come back to this because once everything was back together, turn the key on, turn the switch on, hit the start button, nothing, no spin. So I went back to my troubleshooting, started going through here, and I could not find anything wrong with the relays. I could jump the solenoid, and when I jumped the solenoid, everything would spin. Um, checked the fuse, fuse was good. Checked the neutral light wiring, good. Uh, reverse indicator wiring, good. Swap CDIs, went through everything in the steps and couldn't get anything. So, I pulled the harness off the parts quad. And it is all laying in here. And despite what it looks like, everything is solid there because again, it was on fire, so had to uh, watch. And that's just the rear light, don't need that. Grounded it in, grounded in by the other side of the coil. Let's turn off the gas. Plugged it all in. Fuse. I believe this is, uh, oh boy, this is, uh, <sighs> yeah, from the other harness. Can't recall. Swapped over the whole harness. And now, if I turn the key, if I turn the key with one hand, this is interesting. This key switch is a little bit stupid, but we have neutral. I think that's my connection there. So, in the original harness, I've got a short, I've got a bad ground. What it is, I have not figured out yet, but I am believing my problem is in the harness, not my on-off switches, anything like that. That's auxiliary power, don't need that. So we have a CD plugged in and hanging. Back to the spark plug. What happens if I hit the button here? <laughs> Nada. I hear the relay, but it doesn't turn. No spark. So, Put it all back together and hit the start button. Solenoid wouldn't click, nothing. Went through all the troubleshooting steps, still had nothing. Everything was testing good. Relays, switch, key, um, stator, solenoid, all the way through on the ignition system, nothing. Grab the harness off the other one, plug it in. Once I realized that I had the uh, red blue off the solenoid plugged into the wrong harness, we now hit the button, we get crank. We have the same problem on this harness that I had when I had the uh, burned out quad running and it died, which is hit the button, you get one spark. Just one spark. And it's not a spark when you release the button, um, it's a spark. As soon as you press it, one, keeps cranking, nothing. Release the button, nothing. So why might I get one spark? All right, let's check this stator. Brown red should be between 270 and 380, between 270 and 330 ohms at 68 degrees. Just setting that to 2000. Source coil. 
Survey says... 284, right in spec. Let's go to the pickup coil. Yellow to green, 180 to 220. Yellow to green, 193. Stater's right in spec. And gray to blue, gray to blue, 195, right in spec. The ignition part of the stator is right on the money. Let's go look at our coil and a uh, coil boot. Plug doesn't look bad at all, but I'm going to replace it and try again. All right, now the actual plug is a D8EA, so eight's the temperature rating. I have an iridium plug, another eight. We're going to see if we get the same spark off the iridium plug here. Is it the plug? One spark. That's it. Not the plug. We'll test the primary secondary coil across here. So we're going to go from here to here with our ohm meter. We're going to look for resistance of 0.72 to 0.98 ohms. All right, here we go. Setting the 200, my lowest setting. All right, primary coil test here. One of these lugs onto the wire hanging off. I should be between, let's see, I am doing one ohm on a scale of 200. One ohm, 0.72 to 0.98. One ohm, pretty dang close. Not too bad there. For my secondary coil, five to 6.7 thousand. Changing the 20 ohms, change the 20 ohms, so it should be 5 to about 6.7, should be from a lug into the end here. Oof, 6.4, that's in spec. It does not appear that coil, plug, and boot is my problem, so I'm going to put this back together. All right, so here's where I'm at at this point. <clears throat> Finish the troubleshooting steps through here. We get one spark. The stator that's in there tests fine. That said, when this one quit on me the other day when I was riding it, that was the symptom. One spark, nothing else. So we brought that problem from this motor to this quad. This quad did not have that problem. What came... From here to here, that stator. Harness now as well, uh, but having gone through everything, even though my existing stator is testing out, I am going to swap in the stator that came off of this one originally from this original motor breakdown. Interesting, isn't it? So it is a wet stator in the oil, and I just put fresh oil in here, so I'm going to try and get a little creative. Tip this up on its side a little bit so I can do this without dumping oil everywhere. both of those stators testing fine um, the problem migrated from the parts bike to the new bike so I've just now put the uh, original stator from this one back in pulled out the stator that was with the bike that developed the one spark issue here we go Ooh. still one spark not stator related Everything back off and on, one spark. Start making the rounds with CDIs here. All right, 
right, here's the game plan today. <clears throat> uh, so, I've pulled the harness off. And we're going to lay it out on the table and we're going to go hunting. Because looking at it on the quad, I haven't found the issue. Um, but having checked handlebar controls, on, off, and start. Having checked key switch, coil, um, cap, spark plug, CDI, stator, all of those things. I'm betting it's in my harness. Good plum. All right, so I've actually laid this out on the table here, and I brought in a few pieces so you can see a complete wire harness, including, you know, coil and battery and regulator and CDI key. So I've laid it all out here so you can actually get a good frame of reference. So we're going to go front to back. So how do all these work together? So left handlebar controls <clears throat> sends signal down into the harness under the front of the quad. Underneath, you'll find usually these have an auxiliary. Don't need this connected uh, for, you know, certainly for starting or running. You'll plug this in for USB charging, um, LED lights, wherever you might want 12 volt off of. This is also controlled further back this here is a reset fuse for your auxiliary system and it's a little burn so I can pop this out but you see you could do a reset if you needed to that's what that is this fuse here is an inline 30 amp and if this fuse is blown you won't crank so if that's blown if you've turned your key on you've turned your switch on and you hit the button nothing check this fuse <clears throat> Come back to the front here. So we have three indicator lights. Now sky blue on these harnesses is neutral. So here is going to be the neutral indicator light that lights up. And if we were to go back, and I'll walk through this again, but on the back of the harness here, we have a neutral relay. There it is, falling sky blue. So there's a neutral relay. And there's also going to be a wire at the center of the case down by the stator. It's dirty but this is it this one here is sky blue this plugs in down the case for that neutral indicator now coming off the front of the harness we have our key switch on off position runs back in hiding underneath here this is the brake kill switch so let's walk over to oh uh, we'll walk over to this guy On the brakes, you may have a brake kill switch. This is what would be wired in there. In the case that this is wired in, you would not be able to start unless the brake was applied with this sensor in here. When the brake's applied, pushes a plunger in that closes this. So if you're worried that this is failing, and you can test this with a ohm meter, Put your ohms in here for resistance. Close this. It should be an open line. Shouldn't be any resistance. If you pull your brake and you're still getting resistance, this is not working. If it isn't working or you want to bypass it, connect it here in the harness, and then uh, you'll have no problems there. Here, somebody's been in here a little bit. This is the OEM headlight connector. This one, somebody has chopped up to do something else with. But the headlights not needed for starting or ignition <clears throat> on the front you have another relay and this is an 87 big bear i haven't seen these relays in some of the other big bears uh i'm gonna have to check and put in the comments what this one is now you have your cdi and all your signals that head into the cdi And we also have our red and brown. These are the red and brown are coming into the CDI back from the source coil on the stator. So further down the harness, pickup coil, these plugs here. So we had the blue we talked about. Here's the red, and ultimately this it's faded here on this harness, but this is the brown. These two are that source coil going back into your CDI orange is going to run off to your your uh, main coil I'll call it here orange goes through the harness you plug in coming off the harness is a chassis ground usually you'll see this bolted onto the coil like so 
a run out through your coil to your boot to your spark plug. And this this is harness is all worn down, so we're gonna have definitely have to get in here. Follow through the middle of the ATV, and we talked about the auxiliary uh, reset circuit breaker, you can call it fuse. This guy here is a I'm gonna call it a resistor, and when you turn the key on. Up here you get your neutral light turns on and you'll have to forgive me I'm not sure which one of these is the reverse light versus the um, oil temperature light one of these is that oil temperature light when you first turn on the light uh, turn the the ATV on that light turns on and then it fades out it fades out due to this guy I don't know but I have a hunch that if I were to take this out and jump these that oil temp light would always stay on. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Now we've talked through some of these wires here. Here we have a three pack of wires coming off the stator. This is the charging system. So this is going to go into the harness and back to the regulator. And here we are. These three wires go in and that's power right off the stator. It gets regulated and it goes back into the harness here out to the battery charging etc. So let's see here. Let's go back up to the middle. So we've talked about your charging system. I think we may have found a problem here. This is the, I believe this is gonna be the pickup coil coming off the stator. And you'll have to forgive me, sometimes I mix up, mix up the uh, pickup coil and the source coil. If I'm speaking correctly here as I did before, source coil is the red and brown pickup coil. This is sending signal back up and to the CDI. This is telling the CDI when to fire spark. And if you look here, we have a couple of issues. There we go. And this is interesting. So when you test on an ohm meter, they're going to have you test resistance between green and yellow on the stator side, not the harness side, and blue gray. So my stator, as I mentioned, tested fine. Stator's on the quad. Look at that. Over here, unplugged, here's my source. I put in uh, the ohm meter on here and I get a reading according to the manual. And then I put in a reading over here and I'll probe into the connectors for green, yellow, or uh, it's the uh, gray, blue. Sending the signal out of the stator into that harness to tell the spark plug when to fire. And here's the first problem I can see is on that yellow green circuit one of these wires has rubbed the frame either shorted out in the frame or shorted out to the other one and the other circuit there the gray blue same thing this could be killing spark so we might have just found our issue <clears throat> oh the green one here I'll have to post what this one does plugs into the top of the chassis on a sensor keep running back now when you press the start button you're sending a signal down through this connector into the solenoid. The solenoid closes and allows current to flow. So you're gonna come off the positive to the battery, cross the battery, negative. This one just runs to chassis ground, top of the motor. Uh, let me go show you where this one and this fella here, the little fork connector, terminate on the chassis. Now you'll see there's a harness already on here. You're starting to recognize some of these this is the other end of what would be that chassis ground I just pointed out. And that fork connector goes right in here, which is the other side of the drum for the high-low reverse. I'm going to go back and point this one out here because this is in the oil flow. This looks to be a temperature gauge for oil temp. Let me go show you this one, press-on connector. That's this one, press-on connector. So now we've covered oil temperature, thermostat, reverse, switch neutral switch again red and brown source coil pickup coil moving down the harness going to the starter is the other leg off of the solenoid so on the ATV there'll be a big black wire running from here all the way back to your starter let's go take a look at that one end is secured top of the starter runs back across the chassis and ultimately pops up right here for that other leg. And as we were saying, here is the positive leg 
on that positive runs right to battery and then the other side of that battery from the battery runs right to ground on the motor okay continuing the step back this red wire here um, is going to run to the red on your uh, you know I see it in a couple places either people run it right to the solenoid or they run it to positive on the battery so you would end up with your positive coming off and then this wired in just like that either point depending on the parts quad it was on the solenoid on the quad that I'm building up they were both at the battery run to the back back by the glove box you have another frame ground so that's three frame grounds uh, here well motor and two frame grounds you have a ground at the back you have main motor ground coming right off the battery and then up front at your coil you have another frame ground three grounds to check <clears throat> Finally, at the end here, we have the regulator we've talked about. We have, this is your starter relay. This is the one that goes click. When you turn on at the left handlebar controls and you turn your key on, you'd hear a click. It's this guy. If this is bad, no crank. Then you have the neutral relay. Finally, you have this hanging off here. This is for your rear uh, brake light. And I'll have to check if the brake light is uh, multifunctional. If you hit the brakes, does it light up? My first guess is that it doesn't light up because there is nothing electrical around the switch here to send a signal. Often there, if it was hydro brakes, there'd be a reservoir. And when you press the brake, can close the switch, brighten the light. Same thing up on the handlebar. This is the front, the rear. All we have is the kill switch you know not the kill switch but the brake safety switch so i would make the assumption that on this atv if the lights are on high or low beam the brake uh, tail light is on there is no brake light there's no brighter dim so that is the harness now i believe somewhere in here i get a single spark issue and this is my focus point. As I look through here, I'm looking for places where the harness might have been rubbing on the chassis or someone might have been into it. Here's a good spot to check because the tape is partially gone. There's definitely been some amount of rubbing. But those wires are not rubbed through. And I also should mention this harness uh, went through a fire. So that's why we're going through this careful. That fire was in the back area. So that fire was back here. This looks like it was rubbing on the frame. I'm gonna go make some guesses. All that wiring is sitting here, but I see plenty of people zip tie it, pull it over to this side and zip tie it up against the frame. And I'm gonna guess that however it was run, it rubbed out right along here because it's just the other side of these connectors. So let me, uh, let me get out some kit, um, cut the bad pieces out of that wire, splice some good pieces in. Then we're gonna pick up this harness. We're gonna um, plug it back in over here. We're not gonna route it all through. We're just gonna plug it in so we can test and see if we get a uh, consistent and strong spark. And if we do, we're over the hump. If you call way back in the beginning when we first picked up the uh, quad we're rebuilding, the on off switch and the starter switch were all kind of monkeyed in. Well, I'm gonna use the same gauge wire so I'm gonna snip some sections out of this wire here to splice in. First, let's get this peeled back so we can see what we're dealing with and get back to some good wire. There we go. All right, now I don't wanna just twist these together because the whole harness will end up shorter. That's why we're gonna inject a little bit. I'd say I want an inch and a half there. I like using these heat shrink solders, uh, connectors. So let us see here, 14, so we're gonna use a blue. All right, there we go. 
probably gave myself an extra centimeter there, but now ideally we're not going to wrap this with electrical tape, but all I have is electrical tape. Electrical tape gets a little funky when it gets hot. Um, you'd wrap this with a Tessa tape, uh, T-E-S-A. And I'm going to probably put some of that wrap on when I get some, it's on order. But right now we're going to wrap this up in electrical to protect it. And then we're going to get this all plugged back on and see if we see if we have spark. would have it we're still chasing something here um, because now that we're all plugged back in we have everything back as it was with that replayer coming off the stator we're still only getting one spark same thing after pairing that wire mmm where's the gremlin Alright guys, a bit frustrating here. I have not found anything amiss with this harness. I have stripped back all of the uh, Tessa tape, electrical tape, all of the work that had been done on here previously. And you'll see here and there I put a couple of zip ties in to keep the harness together so it doesn't all fall apart. But other than finding those brakes earlier today coming off the stator, I've been cleaning connectors out, checking up and down for wear, for brakes, end to end. Have not found anything in the harness. Nothing that would make me feel like I was on to why we get one spark, only one spark. Yeah, so I'm at a loss on if there's anything. I mean, I don't see it. I don't see it in the harness there. So, so I gotta sit back and I gotta figure out. Not find anything wrong with that harness. I couldn't tell you for sure if anything's wrong in this harness, but the things to check seem fine. Huh. Oh, it's a gremlin. All right, got to think about this one for a little while.